It's been a couple of months since I worked on this phone line subscriber line interface module or a phone line simulator. So here's a quick review of what this project is as well as where I'm at right now. This is the latest prototype board and I have two of them assembled right now along with a phone plugged into each one and there's this phone cable running between the two boards as well so that one phone can call the other phone and these boards will coordinate the call and then link the phones through this other, I will call it a trunk line, whether or not that's the right term for doing it like this. So we have an ESP32 module controlling all of this. The jack on the right will go to another board like this. The jack on the left is the phone plugged into here. So one of these boards with a phone plugged into it represents a phone subscriber, whether it's a house or another location that has a phone, and it's ultimately wired up to a central office somewhere else, which handles routing the call into or out of that phone. So this slick subscriber line interface circuit is a module that's bought on AliExpress, and that gets assembled to this board, and it provides all of the control voltages and allows the phone to ring or otherwise to operate when a call is being placed. And all we have to do is use the ESP32 module to control this slick module, and we can start to build up a working phone line simulation. So if somebody picks up this phone to place a call, this slick module will tell the ESP32 the phone is off hook. Likewise, if the phone is on hook and this system knows somebody is trying to call this phone, the ESP module can control this slick to make the phone plugged into here start ringing. And if somebody answers, then the call can be connected using this relay to bridge this phone over to this other jack, which goes to another board, just like this, and a call can be placed. And at this point, I've got some software here. It's still buggy and it's incomplete for features, but it is at a point where I can demo it. And I've split it up into all of these different files. Some of these things have been reviewed in the past. And for now, I'm still working in the older Arduino IDE, so I put the version here as well as the ESP32 board file version that I have installed and any other libraries needed including any versions that may be critical because sometimes a version of something changes and everything breaks. So I documented what I could. And of course, rather than, especially on something as big as this, rather than going through the code itself, I drew up some sort of a block diagram. So basically I have a state machine running in here and it's easier to look at a diagram. Before I look at my system, there is this other system out here being developed and it's taking a slightly different path from what I'm doing, but it's using the same basic hardware. And this one may not use a hardware cable going between nodes like I am. This one may be adaptable eventually to actually be all wireless, and that could allow internet connectivity as well. So this is a project to keep an eye on in the meantime, but for what I'm doing, my project evolved from this Random Nerd Tutorials temperature humidity wireless project using ESP Now for the two modules to talk to each other and a Wi-Fi web server so that sensor data can go onto a web page. So mostly what I cared about starting with this project is I wanted ESP Now to act as a wireless communication trunk line so that the two phone stations can communicate to each other when one's trying to make a call, for example. It can ask the other one wirelessly, are you available for a call or not? And then they can coordinate what they want to do. But at the same time, if I want, since we have this Wi-Fi web server as well, I can put some status info here as well as maybe some buttons and text entry so that maybe I can configure the system, but that's something for the future. And this is the web server running on my board right now. So I just put this title on here, but this is just fake data. It's, it's a placeholder just so that in the future I can add features here. 
So I drew this little block diagram representing those two telephone stations where each one of them has a phone plugged in as a separate central office location. And one of them I'm calling a server and one a sender node. And that's because with this original project, one of them is the server, which can host the web page, and the other one is going to be an ESP Now sender. And for that matter, I can have more than one ESP Now sender going to this one server. So in the future, I could add more telephone central office locations this way. But for now, I have a server and a sender. So each one is running a state machine constantly sitting idle if nothing is happening on the phone line. In the case of the server, it can be updating info on this web server for that web page. The other one is just an ESP Now node, so it doesn't have anything like a web server. But aside from running a state machine, we have all these other processes going on which feed their status into the state machine. So if a state machine is idle, it's either waiting for somebody to pick up a phone off hook, in which case it'll generate an IRQ on the board, and then the state machine will know somebody just picked up the phone, so jump to the appropriate state to start making a call. Or if nobody did anything on this node, a wireless trunk message could come in from the other node saying this other node wants to call you, are you available? And then we can jump to a state saying, okay, we received communication, let's go handle it. And it can echo back, yes, I'm ready for a call, or no, I'm not, somebody's already got the phone off hook, and things like that. And if they do agree that they're both ready to make a phone call connection, that physical trunk line between the boards connects them up, and then the phone on one can communicate with the phone on the other. Then if one side or the other hangs up, that will be communicated to the other side over the wireless trunk, and then this side knows the call has ended, so if the phone is still off hook, because somebody is still sitting there holding the phone, it'll just go back to generating a dial tone, thinking somebody wants to make a call until they hang up, and then it goes back to idle. So that's what's going on here. We have this one as the server, which is also generating the web page. This one here is just an ESP node. And here are two serial monitors. The one on the top is the server, so that's this phone. The one on the bottom is the other phone on the ESP Now sender node. And both of these are just sending wireless trunk messages back and forth with a status, just basically to ping and show that these boards are functional. So if I take this one off hook, we should see the off hook status showing up in this top serial monitor. So there, it entered a new state called accepting dialing input. So there, a couple of times I hung up, it goes back to the idle state, I take it off hook, and it's waiting for dialing input. So it's generating a dial tone. And if we are off hook for too long, it starts playing that annoying howler tone to remind us we gotta hang up the phone. We must have left it abandoned. So I can hang up, and it goes back to idle. Otherwise, if I pick up the phone and start dialing in the serial monitor, I'll see the number in progress as we dial. And of course, we can hear the touch tones. Hang it up. And you see here it said in the serial monitor it was starting to play a this is a recording message. Because I started dialing but it took me so long it timed out. So it plays a recording saying the number you reached is not in service and so on. So now, to make it easier to hear, I have this speaker plugged in to tap into the sound on here. I won't be able to hear DTMF presses, I'm only tapping into the audio being generated by the ESP. So that's anything like a busy signal, a ring signal, the annoying howler, or that recorded message. So we'll turn this on. And now, when I pick up the phone, we'll hear better anything that the ESP is generating from the phone company.
So I start dialing, I press number 8, and I'm just going to wait and let this time out. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. And again, we had the phone off the hook too long, so it started howling at us. And we could hear, while it was playing, this is a recording, that message. It was all staticky and hissy. I'm not sure, I can't remember how it sounded originally when I tested it out. But I'm thinking it's because of all the other Wi-Fi tasks going on right now. Maybe this audio generating library just can't keep up. But as long as it's not hiccuping and hesitating and losing parts of the audio, when you're actually listening to it in the phone, it's not so bad. And it sounds more authentic, like a really old recording from a tape machine played over a lo-fi audio system with limited bandwidth. So I'm okay with that part. And so now let's try placing a valid call from this phone to this one. I'm going to clear both of these serial monitors. So this phone is physically ringing and this one is telling me in the earpiece. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed. Please check the number and dial again. And now both of these have the trunk line here connecting these together. It's kind of hard to demo, but when I test this myself, I put one on each ear and I talk into them. I can move them away one by one and only talk into one. And I can hear the conversation with myself. So over in the serial monitors, we're in a state for connect the call on the originating one we dialed out from. And on the one that was receiving a call, first we were in the ring phone state. So the phone was physically ringing. And then after we picked it up, this one also went into the state for connect call. So right now the call is in progress. So now if one of these gets hung up, the call should be terminated. Turn that off. So now the call is terminated. So this one's ready to place a new call because it's off hook. So on the one that we are dialing out from, it went back to idle, but we already had it picked up. So it's accepting a dial input. The call, and now it's been off the hook too long. So it's howling. So the one that we had called went back to an idle state. Now they're just back to communicating on the wireless trunk, giving their status. So now I'll test calling a line that's busy. So I'll take one off the hook and I will call that node. And it's busy. So everything here seems to be working generally, aside from a few known bugs, and I can continue making this all work better, more features, maybe add another node. But that's the state that this project is in for now. So a quick review of the schematic. I did make a few minor tweaks since the last time we looked at this schematic. I don't even know offhand what all the differences are, but Let's just skim through this. So here's the top level page. We have some other schematic pages representing other circuit blocks. But here's the ESP32 module. We have an LED for representing the status. Right now, all I'm doing is showing when the phone rings. I'm using the Mozzie audio library on the ESP32 to generate all of those phone call progress tones, like the dial tone, busy signal, as well as playing back those WAV files from memory saying hang up and try the call again. So that goes into that subscriber line interface circuit module, which is this slick right here. Audio goes into that and that can go on out to the tip and ring to the phone that's plugged into this board as well as going off on the other tip ring trunk line to another station. Audio coming in 
also can be brought out here on this analog audio out. So I'm using that to go and detect DTMF key presses on the phone. And I also have an option here if I want, I can send it back to the ESP32 on an ADC input and digitize it. And that's how we can probably do things like create a completely wireless system sending audio back and forth wirelessly and not really plugging in another physical phone line between boards. So the audio going into the DTMF decoder, if there's any touch tone button presses on the phone line, that audio gets decoded here and we can read in on the ESP what key was pressed on the phone. And this is that slick subscriber line interface circuit right here. Here's the module and the recommended circuit in general. The phone itself goes to the tip end ring on this slick and all of the GPIO from the ESP32 will interface as needed. Audio that we generate from the ESP goes in through this bandpass filter into the slick and then the audio shows up on the phone line. Any audio coming in on the phone line can get received on this slick audio out. Again, going through a bandpass filter and some other circuitry we looked at in another video where we have an option to mute this audio from the ESP32 by controlling this FET as a switch. So that gives us more control over if we don't want any audio going to the ADC on the ESP32 for some reason. Here's the actual physical phone jack interface. So coming from that slick module, the tip and ring go to a phone jack where we plug our phone in. And when we want to hook up to the other phone board, when the ESP has determined we're ready to connect a call, it will control this relay with a transistor switch connecting tip and ring over to the other duplicate board and ultimately to another phone. So the two phones end up connecting through this relay so they can send audio back and forth for a conversation or a data connection or whatever. There's DC blocking and over voltage protection and isolation. So really all we get when we connect these two different stations together, we just get the audio going back and forth. One thing I did change from the last time we looked at the schematic, I have a DC jack here and originally I was accepting higher than 5 volts, a minimum 6.5, maybe up to 12, and I had a 5 volt linear regulator, but I found it was getting way too hot and I put the largest heat sink I had available, it was still just too hot. This board can draw easily 3 to 400 milliamps to do everything it needs to do. So I decided to change this so it just takes a straight 5 volts in and uses that to power any 5 volt logic on the board. And we also need a 3.3 volt supply for some things, so I do still have a linear regulator for that. That one doesn't get hot. Then we have our negative supply generator to give negative 5 and plus 5 to the op amp circuits. This here is 5 volts coming from USB if those ESP modules happen to be plugged in by USB. So that can actually power the 5 volts on this board. Or if there's no USB cable plugged in, when we use an external 5 volts, we can use that to power the ESP modules. I actually found it way more reliable to power this thing from an external 5 volt supply than USB 5 volts, probably because of the amount of current needed. There's too much voltage drop with taking 5 volts at several hundred milliamps from the USB system and then feeding it into this board. So I still need to do more testing, maybe put a scope on the power rail while doing different things, but this is basically the system as it is now. So there still may be a couple of tweaks to this hardware long term, but I think it's close enough now. I'm ready to start thinking of it as finalized with room for future expansion. So I'll continue testing. I want to do a few other things and we'll revisit again.